Okay, yeah, it's recording. So now let's forget about uh, this recording and get to the matter at hand. And what what a nice matter that is. In it. Managed to get since the removal of Destiny's Trials uh, and a few other bits and pieces. I managed to get Taken Flight down to 15 chapters, which I think is manageable. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay, so let me let me give a preface in case I will upload this. So yesterday uh, we had one of those. Oh, let's call up and then maybe have a few <laughs> words of work talk maybe uh, and uh, we s what we did was we we opened and closed three documents again but uh, all of this kind of got me thinking so I, I'm thinking actually actually this sort of uh, very depleted and very uh, very drained and not too brainy uh, state is a very good state for making certain type of decisions because you're at your lowest when you're at your lowest energy you're not uh, uh, you're in the mindset of cutting things down and like you, you you ain't got no no time for any bullshit or any of that so yeah these stories stay these stories go so basically mm -hmm. we what we did was we opened up our first planned collection short mm. short story collection took uh, took a glimpse of some of the planned stories in here and uh, the I think the the initial idea had been that uh, this first collection contains uh, first encounters with essential characters and I think about half a year later this concept doesn't seem so great and shiny anymore and instead I was sort of trying to find the uh, common denominator in these stories and in in a few of these the idea is that uh, we meet a character who is going about uh, their own business uh, or maybe taking on a job or maybe uh, finishing their training or whatever and after they have succeeded kinda sorta uh, suddenly something is revealed that tells us that there's a bigger story going on and once I had uh, uh, managed to put my finger on on that one idea uh, I grew really fond of it <laughs> doesn't mean it's doesn't mean it it's gonna stand the test of longer time but I think this is a better idea than just the uh, oh well, we meet some characters uh, because uh, in salvage mission, in its future iteration anyway, as well as scribe and doctor, and especially in the split personality chapter, the whole idea is that somebody is doing, they're just doing their job, and then they run into something that reveals that there's something more going on. And uh, and uh, if I think back to Seeker and the I ideas that we currently have for uh, for Seeker follow up, then that's the same idea that somebody is just trying to do their job uh, in universe, and then uh, while doing that job more layers of that universe are revealed. So basically this answers one of the long-standing questions or like this uh, this strategy would be a would fill in uh, one of the long-standing questions that we have had namely how do we connect the individual little stories to the whole big overarching Chaos Nova universe do that central conflict. Mm. And uh, we also had certain ideas going around about that central conflict. Like I think we we bumped into certain 
points that uh, that are a very that are some very good uh, again some very good overarching elements that uh, can be applied to almost uh, any individual short story namely what I'm talking about is the uh, the sum server operation or preparing people to to be sent through the space time wedgie <laughs> this this is in another video we can we can look it up like totally <laughs> anyway uh while uh while all these ideas started churning up uh when I looked at the uh, at the current short story uh, candidates in that light, it immediately stood out that uh, picking up trash or the quote unquote you know the, the beginning of the adventure, the very beginning, mm -hmm. uh, as well as space junk, which is basically a retelling or reiteration of that very beginning in in a different timeline from a different perspective that those two don't quite belong uh, within this uh, this uh, theme so like they would be parts uh, they, they do work well as parts of bigger stories namely picking up trash works as a opening for the hopefully <laughs> in the works uh, uh, taking flight storyline and space junk works as a as a character in introduction chapter in Deja Vu, which is like the counterpart of of taking flight, but they don't work as well as the other short stories because they are actually part of some bigger adventure. So there, that's that's what we're up to. <laughs> that's that's the that's the uh, that's the brief. Oh. <laughs> right on. <laughs> So, with that in mind, uh, I took a look at s Taking Flight last night after we got off the phone to one another mm. and uh, or got off the discourse to one another. Uh, terminated communications. And uh, I went and poked and prodded at the Taking Flight chapter list because now that. So, Destiny's Trials worked really well as one of those, hey, there's something bigger going mm -hmm. on stories. Um, but it was originally meant to be included in Taking Flight as an introduction to Destiny. But since we're including it as a short story, I can then take that out of Taking Flight and we can just get straight into it with Destiny after mm -hmm. her escape in Taking Flight, which I think has improved it immeasurably. Mm -hmm. um, but there have been some timeline flaws. And I think, um, I think, um, I'm tr I think when we go through it together, we'll probably be able to get it down to. 13 or 12 chapters, mm. possibly. Uh, and the other side of it is I'm doing this thing where it goes, um, so it'll go Corey Trouble, and then the next chapter is Destiny, and then the next chapter is Corey in Trouble, and then the next chapter after that is Destiny. Um, I think I'm trying too hard to force it into that mold a little bit. Mm -hmm. I mean, it works. There's enough chapters to fill it out, but at the same time, there's some changes have happened. So... Uh, at some point in the first in, in at some point in taking flight now, uh, Destiny and Risto end up getting interrogated by Zhao uh, because of the convoy job, uh, and that's that's an in, that's a new chapter that I've written in just so I can keep the spacing up. So with things like that, I think me and you will probably go through it and delete that. Yeah, I think the. Uh this is the sort of thing that when you're coming up with chapters or when you're coming up with the overarching storyline it seems very neat to do things that way like oh we have this perspective and then that perspective and then this and then that again however uh, it's like it's the accountant's way mm. like it's it doesn't serve the story it serves the layout yeah. So in the end, uh, I'm, I'm, I mean, outlining is fun, <laughs> 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 and and we have to be careful not to overdo it. But but yeah, basically, 
um, I, I would suspect that uh, this sort of layout based uh, chapter thing doesn't necessarily serve the story. Besides, mm. where do you put the, the Nux and Chaos bits then? The Nux, okay, so the Nux and Chaos bits are chapter 9. They get introduced in chapter 9. And then because all the crews are sort of coming together, uh, chapter 9 uh, is Nux and Chaos. Chapter 10 is Corey and Co. helping Nux and Chaos. And then chapter 11 goes back to Destiny, and then chapter 12 is Nuts, Corey, everyone on the Lexus. So, like, one important point is where everybody gets together. Another important point is when uh, another bunch gets together. But basically, e even though I am not intimately familiar with the with the whole outline, I would, I would say bring Nuts and Chaos in immediately. Like, they they are not going anywhere. That's that's the thing. They they are stationary. They are they're they're in a pickle jar. So <laughs> until until they actually get activated and picked out, it's better to know that they are there. Otherwise, it will be like oh, so why uh, are, why are we interested in these guys again? Comes out of nowhere. Yeah. So like, first chapter take picking up trash. Second chapter, let the vi let the reader slash viewer know that there is this bunch of people from the original Exodus mission that are still alive somewhere, and then introduce the idea that somebody is uh, very much interested in uh, getting those people, and then you can uh, turn back to because because then you then you will have introduced. Uh, uh, what what becomes a sort of uh, central conflict or goal for uh, for several people later on, and and until they run into that job now, uh, the the job or the whole picking up the twins, uh, that's like that's the ticking bomb in the background. Meanwhile, oh heroes can go on their usual business. But we have already been introduced to the idea that okay, something something fishy is going on there. Alright, I've made a note of that here. Chapter so two: Let the reader know about these people still alive on Exodus mission, and someone is very very much interested in getting those people. And uh, this is where I make a note to check back to some of the earlier videos that we did. On that, that is. Uh, I don't remember. That's, uh, I think, in the. Da -da -da. I think uh, I will find them. Uh, the da -da -da. Da -da -da. Yeah, you know, you know that. <laughs> yeah, I know it well. <laughs> <laughs> you know it very well. Mm. Uh, I'm gonna share my screen for a second. It's probably gonna make the bandwidth go haywire. Yes, entire screen. Share. <laughs> uh. A little bit of our screen. Uh, let's see. It's not, it's just a tip. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... Why did it open two tabs? No, just one. Channel uh, playlist. Did I make a separate play? Oh yeah. So, Chaos Nova drawing board. Is there a way to open the do, 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 open the playlist without playing it? Okay, like this. So uh, these five. I think uh, I think these are related to the conversation we're having right now. And oh wait, I know that I have somewhere also some videos about discussing taking flight, and now I'm not sure if these are the same ones or different ones. 
I think they are the same ones. I've just renamed them. I, I'm, I have given them the same uh, naming scheme. And I, I'm pretty sure that these cover some of the taking flight uh, stuff. And also this. So yes, this is this is the uh, video collection and that that's the yeah. I I wonder how how many important decisions we have made and <laughs> forgotten. Okay, I, I will stop yeah, sharing I'll screen now. Yeah. Stop sharing screen. Yes. That's one of my biggest, biggest problems. Is before I went away, we got really thick into some discussions about certain mm -hmm. ideas and uh, I, even before I went away we'd stop discussing those ideas for a week and my brain would focus on other things and I'd forget mm -hmm. some of the stuff, not all of it but some of it, but then when I went away and then came back and just trying to get into it I'm still thinking kind of old school thoughts at the moment I think uh, as I'm trying to get myself back into where I was before I went away uh, yeah, it was quite destructive for my writing ability going away, mm. I think. Oh, good. So we should watch those videos back and see what decisions we did make and have forgotten about. Yeah, but that's that's the thing. Not all of those decisions uh, uh, stand up to the test of time. Mm -hmm. uh, also, I think at that point the goal was different. Uh, the goal was different with the uh, short stories. Uh, another videos to uh, another bunch bunch of videos to watch is the short story April, because I think there we we did uh, discuss a little bit about the overarching principles of picking the short stories and, and finalizing them. Although I think we reached different conclusions there. I mean that's that's where the uh, where the whole introducing some characters uh, umbrella term came from. And I think before that we just had a bunch of stories that were ready enough to uh, to consider finalizing. As a, uh, an aside note as well, in Scribe and the Doctor there's some discussion on Corey mm. in, in, the, in the larger story, in the context of like his relation to the Doctor, Subject 16, mm. all that, so I think that would be good to go over as well, mm -hmm. see if it still applies. Uh, and uh, a random idea about Destiny's uh, stories, the short stories end. I think we have a similar note written down somewhere, but just just in case we don't. Uh, so the shower thought was that was that basically uh, when uh, when she has taken off, uh, she has hijacked her transport and I don't know killed or maimed somebody and taken off, and then the people who were uh, observing her, one of one of them goes, ah, she has killed the god and taken off. And the other goes like, fascinating, I have seen many futures for her, but this one is among the, the least likely or some, something like that. So s something that uh, alludes to the idea that uh, uh, that there are actually many variations to, to every situation and that there are people who will be able to uh, if not interact, then at least observe or take notes on those uh, uh, different realities. Sorry, I was drinking. <laughs> I have a cup of tea. Yes, me too. I like for tea. <laughs> that was a very good suggestion before starting the recording. <laughs> good, I've got a kettle in my room now. <laughs> big old jug of powdered milk, although I think I'm going to have to get some more soon. Ooh. I've been drinking too much tea in my room. It's good that it lasts forever.
Burn is revision. As in watching those old videos back and seeing what sticks. Mm hmm And also I'm probably gonna go through taking flight notes again. Mm hmm And see about incorporating this Nuptial Chaos chapter. Um when we're talking about this new chapter two, would Nux and Chaos be awake at this point and walk uh, around no. or would they still be in stasis? I in would cryo. It's cryo. Yeah, <laughs> for yeah, for them it is it is actually cryo. It like cryo old school one. earth technology cryo. Uh, I would I would think that uh, for this purpose I would keep them in the cold still. So this would be this would be the flashback to the Earth fleet uh, arriving, something going wrong. Uh, this particular uh, vessel getting stuck uh, in the orbit somewhere uh, with because reasons, and then somebody making the the decision to ration out the power in such a way that. Uh, a few units of cryo will will remain operable while they uh, just uh, die of old age. We've discussed all this before. Mm -hmm. Some the notes. Yeah, but th that's that's also kind of useful. Like if you. Uh, if we talk over something that we have already talked over before, then even if you do have memories of it, uh, when you when you discuss it like way afterwards, uh, way after the first discussion, then it's like useful to take note which uh, how much you still remember. That's one thing, but also uh, which of the ideas still stick. Because with uh, with certain stories, uh, it appears that if you leave it alone for a while and then return and then re-examine some of the main points, then it's it's easier to identify which points don't really didn't really work in the f first place. Mm -hmm. I'm getting a lot of that with outrunners at the moment. <laughs> Time I go back to it, it's like, mm, yeah, let's, this doesn't quite work anymore. Let's, let's <laughs> fiddle with it. So cool. So, th uh, so it's the flashback. So it would still be from their perspective, but it would be. Oh, no, it, no, it, no, it wouldn't. No, it, it, would it, it wouldn't cryo. be. It wouldn't be from their perspective because uh, it would be more like from the ship's perspective. Or like the the sort of col human collective uh, perspective, because uh, by the time we observe them, those uh, those last people who decided to stay awake and do maintenance to give the others uh, some more uh, chance of survival. Those would would also be dead by this point. Mm -hmm. I mean, like long dead. Maintenance is <laughs> not even a word. They are. We're serious. <laughs> yeah. So if the if the initial rush or initial uh, we we have made it uh, might uh, include like the Earth fleet collective view, then the whole time passing and the current state of of, of cryo and the current inhabitants state uh, that would be uh, from a sort of omniscient omniscient omni <laughs> omniscient I don't I don't know how to pronounce it 
Omniscient? No. It doesn't sound right, does it? Yeah, like, is it omniscient? Omniscient? <laughs> Fuck. Omniscient. The overall point of view. <laughs> <laughs> Suck it. <laughs> <laughs> Let me let me check. Omniscient. Omni. Like uh, I think I know how to spell it, but I don't. I have no earthly idea how to pronounce it. It turns out. Ah. So. Omnis. O m n i s c. Omniscient. Omniscient. Fuck. Omniscient. Omniscient. Well, there you have it. <laughs> Overall. <laughs> so, so yeah, the uh, the uh, Earthling, uh, Earthling introduction and pointing that there is something there would be more from omniscient point of view. And uh, and I would think that uh, once that situation gets uh, uh, gets presented, we don't return to that point of view anymore. So it's like uh, from there on, it's already other people interacting with that situation. So it's like pulling back the camera for for a certain purpose and then no more. And then next time we pull pull back the camera then there's al already someone observing. Cool. So once we've done that we leave them on ice for a little bit. Mm -hmm. They're sort of just a ticking time bomb yeah. in the background. Yeah, and this way if in if you get to the middle of the book and the others are tasked uh, to pick them up or whatever, mm -hmm. and there's like, uh, was it, uh, was there what what was the situation like? They were sent sent there to collect them, and then somebody else was also. Yeah. Uh, so information has come through that an Exodus era ship is is hanging about in a certain system and and Servo wants them for Earth like he wants them because they're genetic material and uh, Zhao also finds out about this Exodus era tech and he, he wants, wants the ship, ship. He, he, doesn't, he doesn't know anything about people still alive he just wants information from the ship or whatever um, but when the Alexa arrive they have to fight off uh, Servo dudes uh, and that's actually the, isn't, the fight isn't important it's the interaction between the crew so like, they're all quite good at their individual jobs but mm -hmm. they're not melding at all so that's mm. really the focus of that that, that scene um, and then something happens to the Exodus Era ship which means they can't recover it uh, but they do manage to, to get Nox and Chaos uh, off and then they go back to Xiao and I think Xiao and Servo are working from the same information on this. Like it's just been revealed to the two of them. Mm. Uh, Some, they, somebody they, somebody is, uh, is dropping hints into the system, <laughs> basically. Yeah. So, that's where I currently stand with that. Mm. Uh, another semi-tangential point uh, about taking flight or like picking up trash. So in picking up trash, there's the whole fight sequence, etc. And it occurs to me that nowhere in the, the whole wide uh, picking up trash do we actually get an introduction about what's a reclaimer. Mm. So this 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 won't yeah. This won't actually be a problem if uh, if we release the short stories before, if we if we have Destiny's Trials as well as One Last Job coming coming up before that. Mm -hmm. But 
in those we would then have to open up a little bit like so what's what, what's what's the deal with reclaimers what's what's that word why we've got a ton of notes on all that biohacking and oh we have notes but uh, those notes are not uh, tied to either of the stories not yet so so basically uh, I, I think it's it's uh, in certain ways it is the easiest to tack them on to destiny's trials because that is literally uh, describing the very process of how a reclaimer activates mm -hmm. so yeah there's a lot more focus on it than in one last job definitely yeah so in that in that sense uh, Destiny's trials might be useful to uh, to to be in a in an earlier position in this uh, collection because it it expla it uh, gives a useful uh, it gives a purposeful situation for explaining a lot of that mm -hmm. uh, like right off the bat. And yeah. then, yeah, from from this, I would say I would put Destiny's Trials first. Then maybe Scribe and the Doctor. Then, and then the others. Uh, uh, that's that's already more open. I think it depends on what uh, what kind of information we. We want knowledge point. So, depending on what his uh, what his finds or what his discovery is, it c it could be either something that uh, ties the rest of the four stories together, or if it's if it's something more trivial, then it's uh, then it's maybe uh, better to to put one lost job in the end. So it's like, could be either way. Mm. I like the idea of salvage mission tying a few things together, but again, I think that requires a bit more discussion. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and also, like, it would be very tempting to uh, make his discovery about something that is very important for all the other stories, but uh, that would be like too easy, or mm. like. Uh, I think I think we yeah we we need some thinking time and we need to uh, we need to poke it with a stick basically. <laughs> <laughs> the original 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 thought all those years ago was that the team who okay so at the end of Split Personality one, Gur Fallon flies. The ship, and I'm okay talking about this. It doesn't matter because we're really yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, so it doesn't matter. Um, but in the original thinking, it was Fallon destroys the Gathram Mark II by flying it into the bigger ship that he's got barely any chance of winning against. Right, that's all fine. But the group who were coming before the Gathram squad in all those locations, like the guys who leveled the village and the guys who took control of the YFV discover or carry, I can't remember, I always get those two confused. Um, that group then disappeared. Once Gurin was killed, Galen, Gurin, Galen, I think, once Galen was killed, they disappeared. <laughs> and they're the team that end up flying into the Gwent Cloud that Dali's trying to warn off. They're like trying to say, he's trying to tell them, oh, don't, don't do it, but they're kind of determined. And when he pulls Cynic 6 off, Cynic 6 is one of the people, or one of the, yeah, let's just say person. He was one of the people who was doing all that bad shit in Split Personality 1 that the Gathram crew were meant to be the patsies for, but because Fallon had connections, they never got, that didn't work out that way. Um, but I think that's too, that's all too interconnected. Yeah, too, too, too neat. Mm. I, I think it should be something on one hand uh, more general and more vague and on the other hand a little bit bigger I think we'll figure something out yeah I don't know I don't actually know where I was going with that I think it was just um, I don't know I just wanted 
no, I need to pick up a fucking robot, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sweet, androids, they're awesome, right? <laughs> yeah. And, and then after a while, that was a bit of a risky move, that was a bit of potluck, but oh yeah, we'll throw this android category. And then after writing for him for a while, Synax 6 has actually become quite a good and enjoyable character to write for, so it paid off that one time, but it doesn't always mm. pay off if you're just like, oh, I'm going to add this character because it's cool. But it doesn't always work. It worked this one, so. <laughs> Yeah. So in the in the essence, the the payoff or the discovery should tie into something bigger, but that something bigger doesn't necessarily have to be uh, directly linked to any other known adventure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's such a direct link to Split Personality One that mm -hmm. it's it's too much. Yeah. Right? It's like what a coincidence. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fancy seeing you here. <laughs> and there, there are a couple of times in the story where I sort of rely on coincidence. Well, not coincidence. I know what is going on behind the scenes, and they, uh, it does make it into the notes, but I don't want to feel like, oh, this happens because of someone behind the scenes with the strings. Uh, I mean, uh, that's, that's the thing, like, somebody controlling, somebody pulling strings behind the scenes only works up to a point. Yeah. Because even if su even if certain happenstances happen because somebody is orchestrating them or somebody is trying to direct certain events a certain way they would still have some goal that they work towards so it's like mm -hmm. they are they they don't care about our plot they mm -hmm. don't they don't direct those those things together because uh, so that we we could ha have a neat bow on some plot points no, no, no. Uh, they they have to act on their own interest and and on their own agenda. So there is that. Yes. Um, I had a point. Uh, something to do with the fact that Luna and Rogue don't even come to the attention of certain people until after the events of SP3, but I can't remember where I was going with that, and it's so far in the future, it doesn't even, it's not... Uh, yeah. that might be worth uh, revising, that, that whole point. Because if we start working from the central idea that uh, there are there there is an agenda to uh, pick and recruit people with certain missions in mind revolving around the void cloud and and you get the uh, test fodder you get the uh, chosen ones and then you get the collateral ones then if some of your characters end up as chosen ones, then I would say you have to put that idea in there from early on. Otherwise, why are we why are we even telling stories about them? Right. So, like, if Luna and Rogue don't, if if they are not among the quote unquote uh, chosen travelers, then. In, in my personal opinion, they definitely are. Okay, so if they are among the chosen travelers, then you you would have to bring in that element uh, much earlier. Okay. Like yeah, be yeah. because that 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 would be that would be the main reason to to observe them in the first place. I mean, it might not get revealed that. Uh, like who who is watching them and why and what uh, where uh, are they directing them, but uh, but uh, the intention has to be there from from very early on. I mean, I thought that's that's what the thing with the Patsy was. Yeah. So originally, the guy who hires Fallon to do. To down. Uh, he works for Servo, uh, the Servo in this universe. So there, 
there, there, there was a link um, for the tenuous one. We might actually have to rethink the whole. Yeah, I think I think uh, I think it's better to rethink it with a fresh uh, fresh take on it because yeah, yeah. Uh, the uh, the current. Uh, split personality as is with all the mutants and village bird villages and all that that is not very strong basis for this like these this this is not uh, uh, connected to anything very strongly mm -hmm. at the same time uh, <laughs> do you know what it's like it's like dipping your toe into the pool you're not sure if it's gonna stick so you don't commit all that much that's what I think I was doing. You don't make your pants one. wet. <laughs> yeah, basically. So, uh, that's what I was yeah. Before. So uh, all that said, it doesn't mean that they can't have uh, that they can't have uh, adventures and conflicts that don't yet cross the paths with the you know bigger forces, because just just like in Seeker, I mean in this this particular adventure sort of uh, sort of resolves or, or ties into it into itself although certain things are certainly in motion and uh -huh. cer certain things are hinted at uh, but uh, we we uh, we do not yet explicitly know about the uh, all the puppet masters and and all the conflicting uh, interest parties who who might want to uh, manipulate certain outcomes and certain uh, certain events and dynamics and such. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna bank this episode anyway because uh, OBS can be finicky. Mm -hmm. Stop recording. Yeah.